okay, that's, that's, I don't have a really uh, exciting answer to that, but the honest answer is that um, my father came from a background where he was made to go to work very early on in life, and he joined a bank because they gave him a free suit, and he always wanted to be a doctor. And so I grew up under the auspices of my parents saying, you're going to be a doctor, you're going to be a doctor, you're going to be a doctor. And I think my best teenage rebellion was steering that ship just off medicine and probably gone to veterinary science or dentistry. And so I just deflected onto dentistry. So it was the last day to send up an application for, and on a whim I wrote down teeth. And that's the honest answer. Uh, which, you know, I was, I was lucky when I um, finished training and that I'd, I'd managed to just meet the right people at the right time, I think. So I had um, some inspiring friends, girlfriends, people around me who just had loads of drive and I listened to them. And I went in to do a maxillofacial job, a proper surgical job with proper one on four on calls and that sort of thing. I'd done a couple of restorative jobs at the Royal London, uh, King's here. And I met some other people here who really inspired me. So I met Martin Kelleher, I met Peter Griggs, uh, I met Harple, and they helped me see what restorative could offer me as an individual. And I have to say, once I looked at it, um, it was a really obvious choice. And I struggle now because I look at restorative and I think, well, why would anyone do anything else? And I'm talking to a periodontologist and, and people who love general practice. But that, you know, that's all a branch restorative and I, I just wanted to do it. So it was the people around me and the opportunities. Actually, do you know, when, when, I, um, when I left dental school, I left an institution that said to me, you know, you, you're as good as it gets. No one can teach you anything. You're, you're wonderful. And I quickly realised that I wasn't. So I was a VT as we were back then, I'm not sure what the correct term is now, but I was a VT. And I remember treating a guy who was fighting for the British martial arts team, and I was trying to do an end on his lower right six. And the practice didn't have rubber dam. I was trying to find these canals without being able to see where I was going. And I had no idea what I was doing, really, as I'm afraid I think a lot of people probably still have with something complex like endodontics. And I was trying to get this this file back into a canal time and time again and failing and just thinking I don't I'm, I'm certainly a bit lost here and he had to pull out of the championship because uh, he had an abscess on the tooth I was treating and I, I couldn't get over that and I've always had an issue with if I'm treating my my fellow man or trying to look after someone I, I genuinely feel a deep sense of responsibility so for me it was a very obvious choice that why would he come to see me for treatment why would anyone ever come to see me for treatment when every other dentist in the UK must be better than me and so that didn't sit pretty with me so I immediately went back in to get more training and I started to enjoy dentistry when I realised it was a big moment for me that it really works. If you do it well it works. It's predictable, you can smile about your work, you can share that knowledge with other people, it just works and people like it, patients like it and the people around you like it. So, so yeah, I enjoy it more now than ever before. Never forget that it's called healthcare for a reason and you have to care about the health of the person you're treating and, and I would never lose sight of that. Because if you care, I think everything else just falls into place. Which means that if you care if it doesn't go well, you care if someone else can do it better than you, you care if there's new evidence that you should know. You care if there's a better material or a better product. And so, so it just falls into place. Be completely tenacious. Tip two is be tenacious. Just don't give up. Just push yourself, push people around you. Just drive, keep going. Ignore fatigue, I'm not interested in that. Just, just, just keep going. And we used to call it tanking when I was studying. We used to think it was just like this unstoppable tank. And no matter how tough your day, it's just tankity tank, tankity tank, just keep going. And you will come to the end of the day, you'll come to the end of the week, and you will have achieved so much. And you can look back and feel proud about that. The third tip is to keep it balanced, however. And that tanking through became almost harmful to me. Um, 
to the point that it cost me personal relationships with people. I definitely let my family down for a period where I was working so much that I, I lost sight of that. And I think keeping that balance is important. So now family, fitness, my friends come first and I can still enjoy work even more. Okay, um, that's an easy one, I think, for me, is that you can't do dentistry if you can't see. And I see people going into their clinics, uh, 20 years old, the age you know, 20, starting treating patients without loops on their face. If you, if you can't see it, you can't do it. It's that simple. And I've never met a dentist in my life who hasn't then invested in loops and a light and has said, wow, what was I doing up to this point? So, so I think that's not so much a mistake, I think it's more of a system that when people join dental school it should be right. We're going to introduce you to clinical dentistry, the first thing you're going to do is put this on, then you wash your hands and then you put the gloves on and then you treat your patient. So I think that's absolutely fundamental. If I can add to that, if I'm allowed to, on a personal note, I think mistakes people tend to make with the amount of uh, litigation at the moment is people overpromise. And the, it's an old cliche, but under promise over deliver will never be more true than it is in today's climate. It was actually, um, it wasn't actually from a tutor, it's from a, uh, a, a, he's a philosophical psychologist, and he's a guy called Bruce Christopher. And the advice he gave me was to just listen. And, and then not just listen to your hearing words, but genuinely listen. And he said, so what do you listen with? And it's not your ears, it's your eyes. Um, so when you listen to people, hold that eye contact. And he was just alluding about the whole thing with soft skills and body language and engaging with people. And his talk to me was the most inspiring talk I'd ever had. Um, and it, it just reinforced, I guess, what we all already know deep down, but he laid it out in such a way that you suddenly think, that, that just makes so much sense. It was based in evidence as well. So now if someone is talking to me and telling me their story or telling me what's going on, I often will have them say, touch my arm and say, do you know what, you really listened, thank you. And everything else after that becomes easy uh, because you get that bit right. Uh, I, you know, I like the balance, and I know that's a bit of a wishy-washy answer, but I like the balance. I love the best thing. One of the best things about the hospital is is you get to work. We have seven maxillofacial consultants, two other restorative consultants, Sue, a team of orthodontists, paediatric consultants, and they're, they're around you. And you can thrive off these guys, and they bring you energy and ideas and knowledge and teaching, and, and you know, it's just brilliant to be in that environment, which you can emulate in practice as well with, with the team that you build. Um, and we have junior staff who come in and you see how clever they are and inspiring they are and it's, it's just brilliant. Um, practice is very, very good because it's different. It's far less pressure on me time-wise because of the way I practice. Um, I get to pick my own timetable. I can work in a state-of-the-art environment um, and I get to use the best kit in the world um, in a really nice, controlled, measured way. So, so I, I like my setup now. Um, well, for, for all of dentistry, I think the future can be good. I think there are big issues at the moment, which you don't need me to tell you about. Um, they're probably covered much more eloquently by other authors. Um, Martin Callow's guest editorial in the recent Dental Update was brilliantly covering that. And we are suffering a lot of litigation at the moment for one reason or another. But dentistry can be fantastic because in my heart of hearts, people value quality. They've always valued quality. And if you think about the car you really dream of driving, it'd be a really high quality car. If you want food in a restaurant, people value it and will always buy it. And no matter what happens, we live in a, an incredible country with loads of free available money. People will pay for quality. And so I think the future is good as long as we all stick with that. Those two things of honesty and quality. And if you put those two together, I think the future is brilliant for all of us.